Hi. Uh, so, this is my uh, third lecture on uh, transformation and uh, weighting to uh, correct model inadequacy. And uh, here is the content of this uh, uh, topic. We already uh, talked about uh, uh, variance stabilizing transformation and uh, transformation to linearize the model. And uh, also, we talked about uh, generalized and uh, weighted least square. Uh, so, today I uh, want to give an example to illustrate you know this uh, weighted least square technique uh, we talked in the previous class. And also, uh, I am going to talk about this uh, analytical methods to select a transformation. Okay, so, uh, let me repeat uh, once more that uh, in simple linear regression model or in the multiple linear regression model, we uh, make uh, several assumptions on the error terms. And uh, given a set of observations say x i and y i, uh, you do not know whether your data set uh, satisfy those assumption or uh, not. So, you have studied or you have learned uh, several techniques uh, to check whether your data set uh, satisfy the model assumptions uh, or not in a module called uh, model uh, adequacy checking. Uh, more specifically, you know uh, this uh, residual plot uh, that is residual against uh, uh, fitted response is an effective uh, technique to uh, test whether uh, your data set uh, satisfy the model assumptions or not. Now, in this module what we are doing is that you know we are uh, suppose your data set does not satisfy the model assumption then uh, how to correct the model inadequacy. So, we have learned about uh, two techniques like one is uh, called uh, variance uh, uh, stabilizing transformation and also uh, we, la uh, we learned uh, generalized and weighted least square uh, to correct model inadequacy. Uh, so, today what I uh, will do is that you know uh, I will uh, sort of repeat uh, weighted least square technique and then I will give an example to illustrate uh, weighted uh, least square technique. Okay, so so weighted least square so linear regression model with non constant variance can be fitted by the method of weighted least square. So, this is a particular case of uh, generalized uh, uh, least square technique and here the variances are uh, not equal, but uh, the observations are sort of uncorrelated that means the covariance terms are equal to 0. So, suppose you are uh, you are given the data set say x i y i and you are trying to fit a model between these uh, two variables uh, between x and y a simple linear regression model say y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus epsilon. And you know here that variance of epsilon i is not equal to sigma square for all i, okay? that is non constant variance. So, what we do here is that we consider the weighted least square function 
the weighted least square function is equal to s which is y i minus y i hat basically. So, that is beta naught hat minus beta 1 hat x i. This is the function we we minimize to estimate beta naught and beta 1 in, in simple linear uh, in, in ordinary least square, but here what we will do is that we uh, give a weightage w y to the ith observation. And uh, what we studied in the previous lecture is that this w y is proportional to 1 by sigma i square. Okay. And I already explained uh, this part in the previous class why this weight is proportional to 1 by sigma i square. So, today what I am going to do is that uh, the main problem in you know, see here you are the you are just given the observation x i and y i. So, you do not know what are what is uh, this sigma i square for the ith observation. So, I will illustrate how to estimate this sigma i square for a given set of observation x i and y i. Okay. So, let me take uh, an example, uh, this is restaurant uh, food sales data. So, here uh, we, we have observation 30 observations here and uh, this is the response variable y, this is income on food sale per month and uh, this is the advert advert advertising expense uh, x i uh, for the whole year. And so, here is your response variable y i which uh, stands for the income uh, per month and the regressor variable x i which is uh, cost on advertising per year. And uh, we are trying to sort of uh, find a relationship between uh, between these two variables x i and y i. And so, first what we do is that well uh, you are given x i and y i for i equal to 1 to 30. And why do not you just first fit a simple linear regression model uh, say using the ordinary least square technique you fit a model uh, y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus epsilon. So, you know how to estimate this parameter beta naught and beta 1 uh, that you have learned in the first module called simple linear regression model. So, here is the fitted uh, model and then once you have the fitted model you compute the residuals. Uh, so, residual means you compute E i, E i is equal to y i minus y i hat. So, this is the original observation or response value and this is the fitted response value. And then you plot, so this is what I call and you know, this is this is called the residual plot, this is called the residual plot, residual plot. So, here uh, residual is plotted uh, sorry uh, residual is plotted uh, against the fitted response y i hat. And look at this plot here, uh, it looks very similar to uh, outward open funnel to me. 
right. So, that means here uh, the constant variance assumption is violated. So, what happened here is that uh, here variance of O i increases or sigma square increases as O i increases. So, the constant variance assumption is violated here. So, this so, this uh, implies that the ordinary least square fit is inappropriate here. So, you cannot go for uh, of course, the ordinary least square fit is the starting point and then you have realized that from the residual plot that ordinary least square fit is inappropriate. Uh, so, now to correct this inequality of variances, uh, we, we should we will go for uh, weighted least square technique and for weighted least square technique uh, to use that we need to know sigma i square because, because there in the weighted least square technique we minimize this quantity s which is w i e i that means w i y i minus beta naught hat minus beta 1 hat x i. We minimize this quantity. So, we need to know uh, the weight w i for the ith observation from i equal to 1 to 30 here. Okay, so, uh, now uh, I will talk about uh, on a given a set of observation x i and y i how to uh, how to estimate sigma i square for the ith observation. So, sigma i square is is the population variance from where the ith observation is coming. Well, so here is the observation again, this is the income and the cost on advertising. Now, look at this data here. You can see that these three x values, they are sort of near equal. So, what we do is that we will put them in one cluster. So, this is one cluster, these two values are again near equal. So, we will put them in one cluster. Here you can see these 5 observations or 5 regressor values, they are near equal, we will put them in one cluster so on. Now, uh, here you compute the uh, average of this uh, cluster x bar and the idea here is that you know uh, these three points are enough near equal to consider them as a single point. So, corresponds to a single response, corresponds to a single predict uh, <coughs> what is called what we call uh, 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 x value, uh, single x value. We have uh, three responses, okay, and so these are the three response values in this cluster and what we do is that we will compute the sample variance of this response values. So, here is the sample variance, I am sure that you know what is sample variance corresponds to this cluster, here is the sample variance corresponds to, so this is the sample variance corresponds to these two observation and here is the sample variance corresponds to these uh, 5 observations. Okay. So, on you compute the sample variances. Now, if you look at the x value or x bar value and the sample variance, 
you can see that uh, the sample variance of the response variable y that increases as x increases and if you if you sort of a plot a scatter plot between x bar and uh, the sample variance you will see that there is a uh, that scatter plot will indicate sort of linear relationship between uh, these two okay so what we do is that uh, then we fit a linear relationship between x and the sample variance. So, uh, least square fit gives s y square equal to this is the estimated value okay, uh, equal to minus 7 3 7 6 2 1 6 plus 7819.77 x bar ok. So, uh, what uh, we are doing is that we, we try to find the regressor variable or x, x, x values uh, which are near equal and then we consider them as a single uh, point uh, corresponds to the regressor variable and then corresponds to that single point you have several uh, response uh, values and you compute the sample variance of those response value. So, uh, you can think of like uh, that particular option say for example, this one. Now, you can think of that this observation if, if this is my this is my advertising cost then the response or the income whatever I get that is coming from a population which has sample which has variance this much ok. And that we do for all the object uh, all the clusters and then uh, we see the relationship between the sample uh, mean for the uh, for advertising cost and the sample variance uh, for the response variable and we fit a linear relationship between these two. Why we do that? Now, uh, what you can do is that you can substitute each x i value into this equation gives an estimate of variance sigma square corresponds to corresponds to y i. So, now here you put a x i you have 30 x i values and then you will get some estimate of the variance corresponds to that x i that means you will get here the estimate of sigma. Uh, so, sigma i square hat that is uh, you know uh, basically s y i hat these are same ok. So, this way once you have uh, sigma i square for all i i equal to I mean estimate of sigma i square for i equal to 1 to 30 you can compute w i which is equal to 1 by sigma i square hat ok. So, here you can see that uh, you compute the sigma i square corresponds to I mean estimate sigma i square corresponds to this point and then you take 1 by sigma i square you will get the weights here. So, the weights are given here 
and then uh, so you are now in a position to apply uh, weighted least square technique. Uh, so you apply weighted least square technique uh, because you know the uh, weights, all the weights w y from i equal to one to thirty, and here is the model obtained using weighted least square technique. Okay, and now to see whether this fit uh, has any improvement over the previous one. Again what you do is that you have the fitted equation and then you compute the residual and you know the fitted response. So, you, you again uh, what you do is that you again uh, plot uh, draw the residual uh, plot. So, this is uh, a plot of E i against V i ha uh, sorry y i hat and here instead of uh, just simple residual against the fitted response, we take the weighted residual and here also you know we multiply that by uh, the uh, weight. So, here is the scatter uh, here is the uh, residual plot and this is the line uh, e equal to 0 and uh, this sort of the residual plot indicates that uh, weighted least square has improved the fit because before the weighted least square it was sort of outward open funnel, but now it is uh, it has improved I mean uh, uh, I mean here the residual are uh, almost like you know centered about the line e equal to 0. So, this is uh, how uh, uh, we apply uh, weighted least square technique to, uh, to when you are given a set of data. So, given a set of data, so the final message is that you know given a set of data you check whether uh, that satisfy the model assumptions. If it is not, then if you are willing to apply weighted least square technique, you find out sigma i square because, because the weight w y is proportional to 1 by sigma i square and we talked about how to uh, find or how to estimate sigma i square just now. And then you uh, fit a linear re, uh, regression model using the weighted least square technique and finally, after fitting the after once you have the fitted model using the weighted least square technique, uh, you again uh, draw the residual plots and see the improvement. Okay. Well, so this is what about the generalized uh, least square and weighted least square technique. And finally, uh, we will talk uh, about one more technique uh, which is again to correct the model uh, inadequacy. Uh, so, this uh, technique is uh, called uh, um, Box Cox method. So, this is called uh, Box Cox method. And uh, this one is uh, is a technique to correct the model inadequacy by transforming the response variable. Okay, and uh, it says that so this one is uh, is uh, is in in uh, I mean this this is. this one correct the model in inadequacy by, by transforming the response variable y to something else. Okay. And it says that a useful class of transformation is 
power transformation. Is power transformation. That is, you transform y to y to the power of lambda, where lambda is a parameter to be determined. Okay. So, what we are doing is that so, we are trying to correct the model in inadequacy by transforming y to y lambda and lambda is a parameter I mean which lambda whether it is 2, uh, 2.5 something or, what, what, or minus 2. Okay. Now, the problem with uh, this uh, power transformation uh, or this particular power transformation is that, so the disadvantage is that is that as lambda approaches 0 y to the power of lambda approaches 1 right. So, that means, uh, this is sort of meaningless because uh, here all the response variable equal to 1 irrespective of uh, what is the value of regressor variable all the response variable is equal to 1. So, so this is an ad disadvantage of this particular power transformation I mean transforming y to y lambda. Uh, so, it says that the method says that one approach to solve this difficulty is to use this transformation instead of y equal y transforming to y lambda you take this transformation w which is equal to y to the power of lambda minus 1 by lambda for lambda equal lambda not equal to 0. And as you know that you know, this function uh, tends to log y log y as lambda tends to 0 for lambda equal to 0. So, this solved the problem of all the response variable transforming to 1 as lambda tends to 1 sorry as lambda tends to 0. But the problem I mean uh, problem with this one or even this one is that uh, as lambda increases the values of these functions change very much. which makes it impractical to to compare regression
models. As you see, you know, of course, if, if uh, when lambda is large, then uh, W value, value will be very uh, large and uh, this makes it um, impractical to compare the regression models. So, uh, we need to use some uh, normalization uh, factor here. So, uh, the geometric mean of the response variable which is denoted by y dot which is equal to y i to n is used as normalization factor. So, what we do is that we transform y to v where v is equal to y to the power of lambda minus 1 by lambda into y dot lambda minus 1 for lambda not equal to 0 and uh, transform y to y dot log n sorry log y uh, this is base e uh, for lambda equal to 0. So, this is the uh, uh, transformation suggested by uh, box Cox method and the question is uh, now how to get this lambda value. So, given uh, a set of observation x i y i what you are doing is that you are transforming all the response variable y 1, y 2, y n to v 1, v 2, v n and use it to fit a linear model between y and x sorry between v and x v equal to x beta plus epsilon by least square for any specified value of lambda. Okay, so, uh, uh, what box Cox method does is that you know it suggests some transformation from some power transformation of course, uh, from for response variable y. So, you transform y to v uh, for all i, I mean you transform y i to v i for, uh, for i equal to 1 to n and then you fit a uh, linear regression between the transform variable v and the regressive variable x by using the ordinary least square technique for a specified value of lambda. Because see still I did not talk about how to how to decide how to fix the value of how to decide the value determine the value of lambda. Okay. So, here is the method method uh, to uh, to determine uh, the value of or to estimate the value of lambda this is called uh, maximum uh, likelihood method of estimating lambda okay so uh, uh, what are the steps you know uh, it suggests that you know choose a value of lambda from this interval minus 2 to 2 it is a closed interval uh, at first and 
extend the range ladder uh, if necessary if necessary and uh, then for each chosen lambda value uh, evaluate v and compute s s residual corresponds to that lambda for the regression model v equal to x beta plus epsilon. For a chosen value of lambda, you fit this model between x and beta and then between x and v and then you compute the s s residual. Uh, you know what is this s s residual is and then it says that the maximum likelihood estimator of lambda corresponds to the value of lambda for which s s residual lambda is is minimum. Okay. So, this is you know of course, you, uh, you, you compute you take different value of lambda between this uh, in this interval you compute you feed the model between o i between v and a x simple linear regression model uh, or of course, uh, uh, multiple linear regression model if uh, number of regressors is more than one and then you compute s s residual for each lambda. Uh, and it, then you see for which lambda uh, this s s residual is minimum and uh, that value of lambda is the maximum likelihood estimator of lambda. Okay. Now, I give an example to uh, illustrate this uh, box Cox uh, method. Uh, so, here uh, this is called uh, you know electric utility data. So, I have uh, 53 observations total and uh, uh, this y the response variable is stands for the peak hour demand uh, and the regressor variable x uh, stand for the energy usage per month. So, this is for a for a first family this is the an energy uh, uh, usage in a particular month and here is the peak hour demand. And what we are interested to do is that we are interested to find a relationship between uh, the monthly usage and the peak hour demand. So, here we have only one regressor variable and the response variable here and of, of course, what we will do is that uh, we will uh, fit a we will start with the simple linear regression model using ordinary least square technique and uh, and here is the fitted model between y and x y hat is equal to minus 0 0.8313 plus 0 0.00368 x so this is the fitted model between or the relationship uh, linear relationship between x and y and of course, uh, you know we need to check whether this fit is good or uh, or in other sense uh, I mean whether 
this data set the you are given a data set x i y i for i equal to 1 to 53 I believe 1 to 53 and you need to check whether this data set uh, satisfy the basic uh, assumptions or not. So, for that what we did do is that you fit a simple linear regression model uh, it does not matter whether this, this data set satisfy the basic assumptions or not you fit a linear regression model using ordinary least square and then you compute the residuals you compute the residual and you have the fitted response you plot them. So, this is what is called the residual residual plot and this residual plot will suggest or uh, will say whether the data sets satisfy the basic assumptions or not. So, here instead of I think instead of E i we have uh, standardized we have used uh, standardized residual it does not matter. So, if you see the residual plot here, so T i is plot is plotted against uh, uh, estimated response. So, you can see here that uh, again uh, this residual plot is uh, sort of uh, outward open funnel. That means, uh, this residual plot uh, indicates that uh, ordinary least square fit is not appropriate and because of the fact that uh, here uh, the variance of y increases or sigma square increases as y increases. Okay. So, uh, this data sort of violate the constant variance assumption. Okay. So, uh, so, we, we cannot uh, uh, continue with the ordinary least square fit. Uh, here, what we will do is that uh, we will try to uh, apply the box Cox technique here. Uh, so, the residual plot suggests that uh, the error variance increases at, as uh, you know uh, energy consumption uh, increases. That means, uh, I, I think the this is uh, this is the uh, x value. Well, <coughs> so, <coughs> so this is the ordinary least square fit and now what we do is that we will take a lambda uh, from this interval minus 2 to plus 2. So, first we start with minus 2 and you compute v, you know what is that v for lambda equal to 2. So, you transform your y to v and then uh, you fit a model between v and x v equal to x beta plus epsilon okay. and here is the residual value. So, you do it for different lambda value and compute the uh, corresponding uh, SS residual. So, here you can see that uh, SS residual is minimum for lambda equal to 0.5. Okay. So, uh, this is called the maximum likelihood estimate uh, of lambda. So, uh, maximum likelihood estimate of lambda is lambda hat is equal to 0.5. So, uh, the transformation finally, we uh, we go for is uh, this one you transform y 2 y to the power of half that is y to the power of lambda minus 1 and, uh, <coughs> and uh, lambda y to the power of lambda minus 1. So, lambda minus 1 is again half here, again half here. So, this is the final transformation. Uh, uh, of course, this is the geometric, uh, this is the geometric mean of the response variable. 
So, you transform y to this. Okay. So, this is the uh, suggestion from the uh, box Cox technique and if you uh, if you check uh, the residual plot uh, for this uh, uh, transform data uh, for lambda equal to half, now you can see the residual plot after the transformation. Uh, here you can see this is the line E equal to E equal to 0. Uh, so, the transform fit here I mean <coughs> has improved because uh, this uh, residuals here the standardized residual are almost uh, centered about uh, the line uh, E equal to 0. Okay. So, this is uh, what the box Cox uh, method is and now we have some time. So, what we will do is that we will talk about some problem. Okay, see the problem here, suppose uh, we have n observations of variables x 1, x 2, x k and y, where x i's are of course, uh, regressor or predictor variable and y is response variable. You have n observations for these variables. Suppose you are told that observation y i are uncorrelated, but the last observation has variance 4 sigma square rather than sigma square. Then the problem is that find the best linear unbiased estimator blue of beta using weighted least square technique. Because you know this sort of fits the weighted least square assumption because weighted least square is a particular case of generalized least square and in weighted least square we assume that the observations are uncorrelated, but the variances are uh, non-constant I mean they are unequal. So, what the data we have here is that variance of y i is uh, equal to which is equal to of course, variance of epsilon i which is equal to sigma square for i equal to 1 to 8 minus 1 and variance of y n which is same as variance of epsilon n is, is given to be 4 sigma square. Well, so the what is the variance covariance matrix here? Uh, variance of epsilon is equal to then sigma square and the data are uncorrelated. So, the covariance terms are all equal to 0, 0 sigma square 0 0 0 and then finally, here it is 4 sigma square. Okay. So, this I can write as V sigma square where, where V is diagonal 1 1 up 1 and then finally, it is 4 finally, it is 4. Okay. So, what you have to do is that you have to find uh, uh, best linear unbiased estimator of uh, beta uh, that is the regression coefficient. So, uh, if I forget the formula for, uh, for the estimator of best linear unbiased estimator of beta, you can derive it of course. Uh, let us start with the model y equal to x beta plus epsilon and this variance of epsilon is not of the form sigma square i. So, what we do is that uh, in the generalized least square technique what we do is that we, we take a transformation of this model you, you multiply by a matrix called g, g y is equal to g x beta plus g epsilon. 
So, G y are the transformed data now and we need to choose a correct G right. So, and also we need to make this variance of G epsilon which is equal to sigma square G V G prime. I hope you understand this one. I want this to be sigma square i which is equivalent to g v g prime is equal to i right which is same as v inverse equal to g prime g. Okay. So, uh, v inverse is equal. So, we need to choose g such that v inverse is equal to g prime g and and we know that beta hat is equal to uh, x prime g prime g x inverse x prime g prime g y. I hope you understand this because in, in the simple linear regression model it is beta hat is equal to just x prime x inverse x prime y. So, what I am doing is that I am replacing x by g x and 1 by uh, y by g y then you get this formula. So, this one is equal to this is this is no this is known as this is blue. Okay. So, what I have to do here is that uh, this g is nothing but v inverse. Okay. So, uh, the blue is final blue is x prime v inverse x inverse x prime v inverse y and I know my v, this is my v and then know I know what is v inverse. So, the final best linear unbiased estimator of beta is x prime diagonal of inverse of this. So, that is again diagonal matrix and it is 1, 1, 1 by 1, 4 just inverse of these elements. Uh, this is my v inverse x whole inverse and then x prime again v inverse that is diagonal 1 1 1 1 by 4 y. Right. So, this is uh, this is what the uh, blue of uh, best linear unbiased estimator of beta hat when you have uh, this sort of restriction for uh, for the variance of y i. Okay. So, uh, that is all for today and uh, we have to stop now. Uh, so, uh, just let me conclude the whole uh, uh, module once more. Uh, uh, so, we know that in simple linear regression model or in the multiple linear regression model, uh, there are some basic assumptions. Now, given a set of data, you do not know whether your data set satisfy those basic assumptions or not. So, what you do is that you start with a simple you fit a simple linear regression model using the ordinary least square technique and then you compute the residuals. You go for the residual plot which is a plot between residual and the fitted response. From the residual plot will say whether your observation satisfy the basic assumptions or not. Well, so, if your data does not satisfy the basic assumption, then what we have learned in this module is that how to correct 
those model inadequacy using different techniques like variance stabilizing transformation, uh, weighted uh, least square technique, generalized least square technique and also finally, we talked about uh, uh, about regarding uh, transformation of uh, response variable by using uh, box Cox method. So, uh, that is all for today. Thank you.